Okay, welcome to Innosus Common Summit. Um, I would like to give you an overview of the foundation and of what we do. Basically, we are a neutral ground for exchange on the topic of InnoSource. So you can come here, share your experiences and your learnings and um, share that experience with everyone else. So essentially, the goal is to spread InnoSource knowledge and to show the value of open source collaboration to corporations. So I have an open source background. So my teeny tiny little um, motivation to be here is to make it easier for people to be active upstream in open source projects that they use on a daily basis. So what, where do we gather? First of all, welcome to the summit. Um, this is our yearly gathering. We also have a in-person gathering, which is the community gathering, typically co-located with events where most of our community members go to. Um, so this is where we get some of the work done that you only can do face-to-face. -face. However, if you are getting started, join one of our community calls. Um, you can join Slack and go to our virtual Coffee Buddies channel where you are being linked up with community members randomly. So you get half an hour a week essentially to exchange ideas with others. But you also can get active in our working groups and improve our learning path as well as, as well as our patterns. So if you're just about getting started or if you have colleagues that would like to get started with InnoSource, direct them to the learning path in, in order to get them up to speed. We do support external entities with InnoSource knowledge. We provide Slack for networking. We also have a services directory where if you provide organizations with help on getting started with their InnoSource journey, you can get up in that um, directory. If you have a case study that you would like to share with others um, so that others can learn from you, you can share a case study with us. And if you would like to spread the word yourself and become a speaker, there's a speaker bureau which um, where you can draw speakers into your organization, but also if you yourself want to speak, um, you can make that offer as well. So essentially the ways to get active for you is to contribute to the learning path, contribute to the patterns working group, help us with marketing, but also share your learnings on Slack in a community call or essentially spread the word. Right now, there are many, many, many people using our publications, um, networking through our channels. A few people less start becoming active as a contributor who regularly participates. If you participate regularly, you at some point will be voted in as a member. Right now we have 24 organization members. Yearly, there is a, a members meeting where we vote new members into the organization. And during that same virtual meeting, we vote on getting directors elected. Typically are being drawn from the members and right now there are nine directors. So essentially the InnoSource Commons as a foundation offers a legal umbrella for people interested in InnoSource to get together. It provides outreach on the topic, topic as well as some level of infrastructure for our working groups. So what are our working groups? There's the learning path. Right now, there are, um, during the past 12 months, there were 30 segments that had been translated into seven languages. And if you benefited from that learning path and now would like to get contribute yourself, that's fairly easy. Head over to their GitHub page, join their Slack channel, and get started with something like reviewing the existing learning path for pieces that could be um, improved. Start with translating the learning path into your um, language or into the language that you need at your employer. You can uh, contribute additional articles and you can also contribute videos of existing articles. Right now the learning path is working on a segment specifically targeting product managers. Um, right, You can participate by extending that segment and by reviewing it and pr by providing insights from your daily work. And with that, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been active during the past 12 months in that working group. I'm not going through the names and call them out explicitly 
because for some of them, I have no idea how to pronounce them. How about the patterns group? Again, you can become involved by validating patterns. Now, what does that mean? If you've taken a pattern and use it inside your organization, simply put the organization name underneath that pattern. That helps us in, to validate the pattern and to tell others that this pattern is actually being used in the wild. So it's really easy. Just take your affiliation name, put it in there if you've used it and if you've successfully used it. And that's already one way of validating it. You can contribute new patterns but you also can take existing ones and translate them. The easiest way to get in touch with the Patterns Working Group is to connect on the InnoSource Patterns Slack channel. And right now the group is working on a Japanese translation. Again, there are plenty of people participating in pattern creation and pattern improvement. A huge thank you to everyone in that list. For marketing and high, uh, outreach highlights, we had 900 plus attendees for the summit, for various community calls, and for the in-person gathering. You can support this group by providing case studies, but also articles or social content. Um, you can involve by, get involved by attending the events that are being organized, but also by joining the marketing channel and helping with the event. You can participate as a speaker, but you can also publish material. There is a, a state of the of InnoSource surveys that has been published in 2021. And there is a services directory that I already mentioned. Again, a huge thank you to everyone who helped with events, with research and with content. This year, we had our first in-person InnoSource gathering, mostly targeted towards workshops where we can collaborate on InnoSource topics to bring the um, content and the idea further. It was also focused on mentorship and community building. Would be great to see you at the next one. Oh, and I forgot to mention, they even had Lego. Right now, there are, there are people active in Japan establishing a InnoSource Commons community in Japan. So thank you to everyone involved over there who helps with translating content, but also with bringing people in Japan together around that topic. And with that, I would like to hand it over to Claire, our, our InnoSource Commons Exec Director. Thank you so much, Isabel. I'll just share my screen now and let's pull up this slide. So I am very briefly going to give a quick overview of what's coming next with some of our uh, uh, working groups. So with the patterns working group, obviously we're going to be doing a few more patterns, but actually there's going to be a focus uh, based on the feedback from the gathering on ca capturing some more anti-patterns as well. So we know the signals about what might go wrong when it goes wrong so that we can actually catch those beforehand. And there was also some feedback about the discoverability and findability of our patterns. And there are some folks that are planning to work on improving that in 2023. For the learning path, there is a new content planned. And I know that um, Isabel, you have put together some, um, some, some drafts around that as well. So we are planning some new content for uh, folks like the product owners and the business people within InnerSource. And that's a great focus for 2023. For the marketing group, um, we are hoping to be able to continue all our events. Uh, once again, bring on the idea of a gathering for 2023 that went so well this time. But we also want to give a little bit more support to the local communities that are springing up around the place. So um, hopefully we'll be able to create some resources that will be more easily used by these communities as we move forward. And we are, of course, still focusing on gathering evidence and, in fact, the research and the survey that we put out every year. But one thing I do want to call out is that we are planning to add one more working group in the near future. So if you are responsible for an inner source program or sitting in an inner source program office, 
or an ISPO, um, you will be very interested to know that Russ Rutledge has proposed the idea of creating a new ISPO working group, which we're very excited about. And if you are interested in this, the next community call, um, I believe on December 6th, uh, will be on this topic. So please do come along to that. We will be put, putting up the links for registration later uh, this week. So we were very excited about that. Congratulations to everyone involved in pulling this together. It's going to focus on creating the documentation and tools and training that folks will need and um, when they are setting up their own inner source program office. So the last thing I want to say is the great team over in the research group or the survey group have actually just launched the State of Inner Source Survey for 2022. So when you're finished today, we want you all to go along and please start filling out that survey. We're hoping to get a great response so that we can get the data we need um, to serve, serve it back to the community to tell us where we're all at and, and what we can do better. So please do uh, fill that out as soon as you can. So without further ado, I am going to hand you over to our wonderful keynote speaker today, Simon Wardley, the inventor of Wardley Mapping. Um, Wardley Mapping is a tool uh, that can be used uh, to help people build their strategy, find out where they are. It's an amazingly useful uh, framework, and we're hoping that Simon will give us some great tips for how we can use it in InnerSource Commons to figure out how we can make InnerSource more effective. So Simon, I'm going to stop sharing and hand it over to you.